Fred Coville, Plastic Surgeon, New York and London. Uh, for Mr. Wainwright, uh, just two quick questions. One, when you, you didn't get to the point, unless I missed it, uh, which, uh, which fermented soy products are you kind of talking about? And also, what about the effect of soy products on men? Because you talk about increased estrogen levels, and I've always heard that they increase kind of gymnastia, things like that. Walter was very careful to keep non-commercial because there are a lot of competing products. But at this point, the question and answer, Type. you need some specific answers. So, Walter, please give him some specific answers because there's a lot of confusion as to which product does what. All of the research that we've done, which goes back to 20 years, has been now with a product called Healan, H-A-E-L-A-N, Anglo-Saxon spelling for healing. So it's a concentrated fermented soy beverage. There are many studies. It was initially developed as hospital nutrition. Uh, there's studies on liver, liver function, liver support, knocking out carcinogens in the liver, lung emphysema, silicosis, asbestosis. There's one anti-aging study with 303 healthy people all eating the same food off hospital trays four months in a row taking a tablespoon a day as an anti-aging product. Then there's a study with 318 cancer patients, 276 taking chemotherapy to balance radiation where they use it along with it. Those studies show it protects people from the toxic side effects of the chemotherapy. None ever had to have a transfusion. None ever had to discontinue a course of treatment from weakness. And the later research shows you get minimum eight to 10 times greater cancer cell kill than chemotherapy does by itself, and it stops the mutation of the cancer cells. And there's other studies as well. Now, addressing uh, the question as to whether there's feminization uh, in men, uh, no, we do not see that. There are actual studies, uh, Japanese martial arts people have eaten uh, soy for, for quite some time, and it actually lowers total circulating levels of estrogen 30 to 40 percent uh, in people. So there is, uh, you know, uh, aromatase inhibitor activity there. Thank you very much. Next question. We've got a microphone. Okay, I think since we're... Uh, Dr. D Dr. Rain, right? Dr. Damon Brakes bear you talked about soy in cachexia due to cancer. Cachexia occurs in many other diseases, arthritis, bronchitis, uh, heart disease. What about soy in those conditions? It uh, has the fermented soy, and I'll talk about our research. You know, I can't talk about other soy products that are unfermented because they have difficulty. Unfermented soy products have uh, chemotrypsin inhibitors in them, which stop the uh, ability to digest proteins. So the fermented soy, uh, when it's taken, it will produce blood protein levels in area eight and a half percent. It also works as a retention enema, uh, either oral or as a retention enema, and it does uh, take care of the cachexia, uh, also protein calorie malnutrition, malabsorption, and nutrition that uh, that people would be deficient in. Next question. I'm going to throw one at Dr. Monroe. Dr. Monroe, our work with autism found that even a provoked urine specimen using IV DMPS getting no mercury in the excretion proved nothing because the infection in the neurons was raising the local levels of metallothionine, which is a powerful chelator, keeping the mercury in the brain. So doctors draw the wrong conclusion and say, there's no point in chelating your child because no mercury needs to come out. Do you think, since everybody needs detoxification, you can give us some suggestions? What can we use that is affordable and convenient for somebody who hasn't studied it as extensively as you have so that we can get an idea of where we start with a patient? Because it takes 15 years to take the lead out of your bones. People are being lied to if they think the three-day detox has done something. So. Can you give us some more guidelines? Because you gave a great presentation because you know how to use all those lab tests. Is there something that we can jump in with for everybody to protect the public so they get a bang for the buck and they know when they've started to really unload their toxins? Well, thank you. Um, well, I think the heavy metals are really important because um, it may be simplistic to say this, but lead looks like calcium to the body. So we stick it in the bones where calcium is, we put it in cell membranes, and unfortunately it is a very toxic substance. Um, there are, well, EDTA is a very simple substance. It's digested, so if you take it by mouth it can be digested, but some gets absorbed. So if you 
If you want uh, to hold the microphone close. Some gets absorbed. So if you want to use a, a product that is a regular chelating agent, you could use a small amount of EDTA every day. With regard to um, people who don't want to consider that because you know, they think that they won't get out enough, lipoic acid, thioctosid, is a major agent which will help to chelate out heavy metals, but it's also something that is supporting and that supports the liver. Because even if somebody's been poisoned with um, the mushroom poison uh, from Amanita phalloides, it, you, can use a chelate, you can use lipoic acid to actually help to recover the liver. So I think that using lipoic acid is a very important um, other chelating agent, an other protector. With regard to getting rid of things, though, from the liver, you have to have the liver well supported. Now, everybody tends to think that one agent or one other agent is important. I tend to think you need a jolly good balanced regime to support the liver. Um, a lot of people don't get enough protein in their diet, and one of the very simple things that I do to improve people's diet is to use egg white. Cooked egg white is extremely important, and we use five egg whites three times a day when people are, are in extreme uh, need of depollution. Um, that's a very simple thing, together with the oils and the other special products. I want to so there we are. I want to mention that there is a U.S. biotics laboratory that does a urine test, and they measure phytates and toluene and xylene and three others for $140. I think people all need the encouragement to know that they are really getting rid of toxins, and documentably they will do that. And we do have a place in Colorado Springs, Crayon Institute, that specializes in producing a report for anybody for the lousy 140 bucks. So I, I'm, I'm looking for answers to these problems because if people don't understand that they have only begun, we need to, who's got the microphone next? We're over here. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Wainwright, um, understanding that the anabolic portion of soy is roughly around 16%, does the fermentation process increase that number to bring out a better anabolic profile of the protein. Uh, Dr. Monroe was talking about egg whites, which is approximately 48 percent. Uh, actually, when you have the egg together, it's approximately 48 percent anabolic and is the highest existing um, anabolic portion of any protein. Have you found that the fermentation process has increased the anabolic portion of the soya? Our uh, fermentation process gets rid of all of the starches, sugars, and uh, so all we have is the soy phytochemicals and soy proteins. We hydrolyze many of those to amino acids in a free form, which will put them directly into the bloodstream. So we, uh, uh, if we would look at a profile on it, it's right at six grams of solid proteins plus the amino acids, which are the hydrolyzed proteins. Okay, uh, when you've done the excretion tests, have you determined an anabolic profile, though, and I'll just leave it at that. No, we have not. Okay, thank you. I'm going to throw a question out to Dr. G.S., and when you answer, please put your name out one more time so we all get better at it. But my question to you is this. I am as worried as anybody can be about that one out of two developing Alzheimer's by age 85. Your research is extremely exciting, and obviously everything is multidimensional. But it certainly looks like the uh, green tea and the curry and the resveratrol are going to be very useful. Now, my bias has been from heavy metals, and we've always talked about the aluminum and the mercury, and I have seen dramatic proof of even chronic tremors and stopping Parkinson's getting mercury out. Do you think there's any chelating action with the substances you're looking at, or do you think that adding a heavy metal chelator like zeolite is the newest thing we've got might add to the exciting results you're talking about? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I was telling to, but uh, I believe that um, utilizing chelator can be a, a fantastic strategy in terms of prevention, but of course we have first to be sure to, <laughs> to, to need the chelation. Uh,